I really don't know what the stock exchange has to do with my life. One, the bank is listed in the stock exchange, and thanks to that, it generates a large number of jobs for the country. Two, network exp the expansion of the, ne uh, the bank branch offices was made possible thanks to additional resources from the stock exchange, and this means more credit for more people to finance, among others, their businesses, homes, and automobiles. Three, the phone line you use to contact your clients belongs to a telecommunications company that is listed in the stock exchange. In fact, with the resources obtained, the company invested it in a fiber optic network, network thanks to which it will reduce your telephony costs. Four, the shopping mall was developed with resources from different investors that were obtained through the products and services offered by the stock exchange. Five, this year, the rest restaurant obtained necessary resources to improve its facilities and its operations through financing from the stock exchange, and now it generates double the number of jobs. Six, the self-service store was is also listed in the stock exchange, and thanks to that, it was able to open new stores all over the country, reaching communities where before the cost of products was even higher. Seven, your retirement plan invests your money in the stock exchange so that when you retire, you have a pension that has, has grown significantly with time. That should have grown significantly with time. I never imagined that the stock exchange was everywhere. Did you know that? There are many people who still don't know how important the stock exchange is to their daily lives. Nevertheless, the re in reality, the stock exchange is everywhere, and it is for everybody. It contributes to Mexican companies' growth, to creating more and better jobs, and increasing the yields of savers and Mexican workers through better alternatives for investment. That's why the government of Mexico is announcing today measures to strengthen the stock exchange to benefit each and every Mexican. The stock exchange is everywhere, and it's for everybody. The government of Mexico. This is a presentation of the National Banking Commission, the Banking and Securities Commission. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. We're going to tell you about the institutional stock exchange, Viva. This introductory video was prepared by the National Banking and Securities Commission on the occasion of the concession to operate a new stock exchange. And this was awarded last August 29th. So we're going to divide our presentation into two parts. The first will tell you what a second stock exchange is about because as Viva, we believe that it's a good idea. And in the second part, we're going to describe some of the specific technological challenges, which is what is uh, has more to do with Cisco Live. So, and so we can integrate all three elements, the importance of the stock, ex stock exchange in the Mexican economy or for the economy of any country for that matter, why this project came about, and a few things that we are solving with it. My name is Carlos Hernandez. I am in charge of the technological implementation of Viva. I've been working on this project for two years now, and I've seen it grow. Ever since it was a secret project, nobody knew that we were to create a stock exchange. And in Shala, and God willing, we will uh, start this uh, during the first quarter of 2018. We're going to describe the flowchart of the company. The holding company is called Sencor, and we have several businesses. We 
became involved in financial markets 25 years ago. For those of you who are familiar with that world, the Enlace, which is a banking brokerage with offices in New York, Chile, Colombia, Argentina, and Mexico, was the first company in the group. In 2000, we created a price supplier, which is a per price, uh, price value or there are two companies that do this in Mexico. The other one is Balmer. And we also have offices in other Latin American countries. Then we started a institutional brokerage company that operates a securities loan bank. And our baby, which is the institutional stock exchange under the name Biva. OK, so the first question is, why did we think that having a second stock exchange was a good idea. Well, Mexico is ranks 15th in the economies of the world. And according to whatever metric we consider, capital market development has many dimensions to grow. And developing the market itself is not does not necessarily agree with the size we have as an economy. We see this first as an opportunity, and secondly, as a business opportunity, an opportunity for innovation uh, for Sencor, and secondly, as an opportunity for the economy of Mexico as a whole. As I mentioned, we rank 15 in the economies of the world, but according to the world op of operation exchanges, we rank 44 in listed companies. In other words, if we wanted to occupy a similar ranking in the world, maybe 15 enlisted companies, we would have to have 890 issuers in the market. At this point, we have about 150. So in terms of listings and companies that could go out to the public market, we have a lot of space for growth. From the perspective of the amount of actions operated, we rank 25. In other words, the daily volume or the annual volume, uh, whichever perspective you want to uh, take, instead of ranking 15, Mexico ranks 25th. In order to attain the place that we believe we should, because of the size of our economy, we would have to multiply market volume times six. This is a very important piece of information because one of the things that, and we'll discuss this later on, one of the things that we consider will happen is that overall the market will grow. So current players or the Mexican stock exchange will necessarily see a reduction in their volume. We believe that quite to the contrary, the operation volume will grow for everybody. In other words, instead of having a slice of the pie, what I'm, what's going to happen to me is that I'm going to make a bigger pie. A supremely interesting market for Mexico is the currency market, IRS and bonds. That ranks number eight in the world. And what does this mean? This means that in other financial markets, asset financial markets that are just as important for investors as well as for economies, we have a very deep market. We have a highly developed market. And this means that we, as, as Biva, this tells us that there's room to grow. And we've already gone to very mature markets, and what we want is to have our capital market follow that same direction. Finally, a common perception is that the ca capital markets is only for gigantic companies. In fact, it's true up to a certain point because capitalization of a company in the stock exchange in the current market is $2.7 billion. We also want to change the situation because large companies are not just the companies that have this kind of capitalization. Any company with a capitalization between more than $500 million is already a large company. And this means that it is a company that potentially has a sales infrastructure ca capacity and market to access the public market. And this is proven by markets similar to ours, such as Canada, Spain, or South Korea, where 
capitalization of the companies that exist in the capital market is on the average 500 to 600 million dollars. Why did we think about this today? Well, we have been observing uh, dynamic capital markets in other countries, and we find that to be highly interesting. Many of you might have read the book Flash Voice or Flash Boys, showing the reality of the capital market in the United States. That book describes the birth of a new stock exchange, which is IES, under a similar concept, whereby it is seeking to protect the interests of the investors in the long term. In the United States alone, there are 12 stock exchanges. In Canada, there are four, four or five. In Spain, there are three. So this tells us and allows us to think that we're going to be able to accomplish that here as well. Technology is supreme of supreme importance. Technology in the stock exchanges, we cannot start small and then grow. No, we need to build the maximum capacity that our stock exchange can have in the first five years of its, of its existence. And this means that the entrance barrier is very high. Nevertheless, we're going to show you a few things we did so that we could bring that barrier down and our investment could be less risky. Finally, through the financial reform and changes in regulations made by the National Banking Commission, we were able to contemplate the possibility of having a second stock exchange, and secondly, that there would be conditions so that that stock exchange could be operational and competitive. So, everything that we're going to describe during this presentation is just to contribute to modernizing the securities market in Mexico, the capital market. How would this work for those of you who are familiar with how the uh, securities market works? Issuers are listed only once. In other words, America Mobile is listed in the Mexican Stock Exchange. That listing remains, but that value or that security will be negotiated in Viva. That means securities uh, functionality. In other words, anybody listed at this point will be uh, transacted in Viva. Others can be registered in Viva for the first time or an issuer has a need to change its listing between one stock exchange and the other, then the process will be determined by regulation. Uh, but actually, it's a simple process. And finally, the National Banking Commission studied and developed rules so that market players can, in turn, give their end investors, who are us, or institutional investors, appropriate conditions to so that the existence of two SOC exchanges uh, favors them. They, there, there will be competition among us, and this will give us incentives to have a better market or a better execution, as we term it in our industry. The project has been studied for more than five years. It's been active ever since we started with the uh, technological construction, and that was two years ago. So we believe that we have seen positive changes in the stock exchange market, specifically in the capital market of capital, mar capital market because of the existence of Viva. Something that we're pleased to see is that there is a great deal more promotion to issuers, companies that can be listed to through public bidding, initial, uh, an initial public bid. There has been an innovation. Once there is competition, operation models are reviewed, and these accelerate or make the market more dynamic. And the securities loan market, which is a very important component of a developed market, is also growing. And very importantly, Something that all of you are familiar with is this way you can guarantee market continuity. As you can see in your day-to-day, -day, two systems built in two different ways 
usually don't fail in the same way. So administrative recess caused by technological problems in one or the other stock exchange will not keep the market from functioning or operational. In other words, we're going to have a capital market on a par with any one existing in a first world country. Okay. Viva, how does it operate or how does it make money? Well, Viva has three ways to generate income or revenue. First is operation. Every time there is a transaction in the stock exchange, it is completed and we keep a small fee or commission. Every time a company is listed, either because it lists its debt or because it lists or because it has an initial public bid and maintains its listing in our exchange, we collect a fee for that transaction. And finally, we have all the information. One of our most important assets is information. That information is generated in real time as well as in uh, periodical sequence. And with that information, we build entities that in themselves generate value, and these are the indexes. In this case, we have an association with FTSE, whereby we're going to create an index called FTSE Viva, and the index is nothing more than a basket of stock or companies that reflect the way the Mexican economy is moving. Based upon these indexes, we create other investment vehicles that let you say, okay, I don't want to find out what all the companies, what are all the companies that exist in, in Mexico. In general, I just want to benefit with the Mexican economy. So what you do is that you uh, track or follow that index, the, the IPC, which is the existing index. But this new index is, will be called FTSE Viva, which was designed, it's an index designed by FTSE. Okay, another important thing is that our, the sale of information depends a great deal on infrastructure. We need to guarantee that when we distribute information in real time, everybody can receive it in a timely fashion with no detect detectable differences in terms of design or technology that will allow somebody to have the information before anybody else. We're going to uh, discuss this more at length later. One of the things that we implemented in Viva is that we have very low latency. We're going to show you how we were able to accomplish this. That on a worldwide level, at one point we will, we'll be able to share these figures, but we will be at the, on a par with the rest of the world. But we have other things like the total depth of the books. This for those of you who like details. We can transmit to any machine or any system that is listening to us, we can transmit all price levels for all s stock in real time. So if there's a price book where we have 300 different positions or 500 different positions or bids or 2,000 different uh, bids, we've got a technology that will allow that book to reach everybody under the same characteristics that I mentioned before in con under conditions of equality and timeliness. We did something that might not sound very sound very innovative, but all st the standards that we use are absolutely international. We did not reinvent the wheel. We didn't uh, decide to seize it. We didn't opt to season or give anything or personal touch to any of the protocols or to any of the modes of communications that exist for our clients, in this case, stock exchanges. So therefore, all technology suppliers that are also using these open standards can connect with us at a lower cost. 
Some of the advantages, why would a company seek to be listed in the stock exchange? Well, why do we think that that adds value to an economy? Well, first of all, because a stock ex exchange or the stock market is an efficient way to find the price of a company. Additionally, it is a very deep market. This means that whenever I want to uh, leave something, I can go to this uh, to the stock market, I will find somebody that will buy it. That doesn't happen when the com company is private because the transaction is private and it can take days or months. But in the case of the capital market, stock is sold practically instantaneously. In addition to that, there's a brand benefit because companies that are public need to fulfill certain requirements that make them more transparent and makes it easier to follow their uh, business and economic performance, and that is also a benefit for companies. We have received th the question, we have been asked very often, is if there is a culture in a country for companies to uh, be publicly listed. The reality is that the requirements are not that stringent, and these are requirements that as companies grow, they can comply with oftentimes in a natural way. The requirements, uh, they have a panel of independent advisors like regulatory auditing and uh, partnership practices and compensation committees are nothing more than best pra practices of corporate governance that are used practically globally. And the other requirement is to present periodical financial information under certain quality standards, which is a requirement in order to maintain a well-managed company. So actually, the requirements in order to list a company are not extraordinary. Finally, uh, with everything that we have discussed and with the technology that we're going to present to you, where are we headed? Where, where do we see ourselves from uh, in here uh, in three years' time here at Cisco Live? The, what we want to do is to be able to announce to you that 50% or the daily operation volume in the st stock market has grown 50% and that we have grown the number of listed companies 30%. In other words, we're going to be listing between 40 and 50 new companies in the next three years. These goals are ambitious. At the same time, we believe that they're in line with the potential growth of the market based upon the data I shared with you in the beginning. Finally, some of the some of our suppliers or the supplier of the engine, which is the at the heart of our operation, is NASDAQ. Once again, we did not seek to reinvent the wheel again, but find who had the technology that we could apply here and who had the know-how to uh, convey it to us, to teach us how to operate a capital market in the most efficient way possible. And finally, the video that you saw at the beginning is a part of the protocol ceremony uh, held by the government of Mexico, whereby it awards us a concession to form and operate a second stock exchange. Since August 29th, we are official. We became official. Okay, I'm going to show you, I'm going to introduce Jorge Garcia Pesa. Jorge Garcia is a person in charge of the uh, infrastructure in Viva. He is one of the individuals that for two, more than two years ago dreamt about the project, who is the heart and soul of that infrastructure team. Good afternoon, and thank you for attending this talk. As Carlos said, my name is Jorge Garcia. I am in charge of infrastructure for Viva. I have been part of Grupo Senco for 14 years or more, and in this Viva project, 14 years. The idea for this second session section is to 
talk to you about the challenges we have faced in building the technological platform supporting our applications. So the first challenge we faced <coughs> was to design a platform that could provide high availability to our applications. As you will know, the stock exchange must operate continuously and within, without any interruption. So we, dis we designed an infrastructure where everything was redundant from redundant and, uh, locations as data centers and operation centers. Our data centers are certified by t uh, with tier four level certification and redundancies in hardware as well. Every server, every piece of hardware, every network component has a redundancy as voltage sources, double cards, uh, the level of connectivity we have redundancy in one uh, links, databases and applications were also designed with that same high availability concept in mind. In this diagram, we intend to represent on the left side that we have several cabinets for the production environment where we distribute our servers in such a way that high availability is increased. We have redundancy in network equipment providing connectivity to the clients and redundancy in network equipment towards the administration network. We could say that if a whole cabinet crashed in the production environment, we could continue operating because of that high availability. Now at the level of applications, we have several servers serving applications or services demanded by our clients, such as or the routing, for instance, market data generation as another example. The second challenge we faced was to come up with a high security platform. The high level of security is essential in order to guarantee the reliability, integrity, and availability of information. In our platform, we integrated typical elements that you all know as firewalls, uh, intruder detection systems, anti-malware systems, event correlation systems. But additionally, we have hardened our boxes, our servers, our hardware in the network. We have SOC services. We, can, we run vulnerability and pen tests, vulnerability analysis frequently. And something that we in, in integrated into our design is the design and implementation of everything with the idea of segmenting environments in mind. Environment segmentation is essential to provide high security. As you can see on the screen, we have three different environments, quality assurance environment and user testing environment. And the, th the final one and most important one, the production environment. On the primary data center, we have all three. In the secondary one, we only have a backup for the third one, production. Access to these environments is restricted to security layers, firewalls in this case, but there is also segmentation in access networks leading to these environments. We have a management network that allows Viva's employees in our operation centers access our environments, and there is another access network totally separated from the first one that allows connectivity of our clients to the testing environment and the production environment. The third challenge was to provide access to our negotiation engines with as little latency as possible. As you know, stock exchange offices and uh, the stock market of firms want to do, carry out their negotiations as quickly as possible in order to adva take advantage of the opportunities in the market. The characteristics of this, main ones, are making use of technologies such as the high frequency tra trading and algorithmic tra trading to react faster than their competitors. That was uh, our, our first strategy we implemented. But the second was, was to connect with stock exchange firms as closely as possible so that their orders would be executed quickly, uh, faster than the competition. So actions we implemented to cover the requests of our clients, 
included a network that we built using network ultra low latency high speed network hardware the minimum uh, speed was 10 gigabytes using the Cisco equipment of the Nexus line supported uh, or designed to support the high frequency trading with these we succeeded in switching layer 2 and la uh, layer 3 unicast and multi cache traffic with a latency of 250 nanoseconds. We also implemented what we call the co-location network through which we provide the proximity service. This service, as you can see on the screen, allows stock exchange firms located in the same data center as we are to connect through a couple of uh, wires, fiber or copper, through this ultra low latency, uh, achieving um, latency lower than 30 microseconds. Our largest provider tells us that that is among the lowest latency uh, settings in the world. Another challenge was to support a high volume of transactions. After 2004, when we started using high frequency trading, the volume, the number of transactions and the uh, dimensions of the transactions being negotiated practically doubled. And as you can see on the charts, high frequency trading and all transactions generated through high frequency trading represent about 50% of the total volume. Additionally, there are peaks in that volume of transactions probably generated by national or international events, such as last year with the elections in the United States, wherein the historical peak of transactions was reached in the uh, Mexico Stock Exchange, amounting eight to eight million transactions in the, on the day of the elections. So our systems are designed to support five times that volume. That is, we could support 40 million transactions per day. How do we succeed in that? Through what I said, low, high speed, low latency network. Second, high performance servers, both in processing and memory. Um, and all transactions are carried out in, on the memory and all, are, they are only written into the database at the end of the transaction so that this doesn't impact the performance of the equipment. And most important, that we are using technology and the architecture of our strategic par partner, NASDAQ. Another challenge we are actually facing today, still ongoing, is onboarding our clients, the stock exchange firms. Um, our objective is to connect them as, fa as quickly as possible because our goal is to start operations in the first quarter of the, prom of the next year. Second, we want to be efficient and we are delegating the management and support of these network uh, aimed at connecting or onboarding clients. We're going to dele delegate that to a uh, connectivity expert. Third, we want to make sure that dele this delegation will not impact qua uh, high availability, high performance, and quality. So the solution was to build a stock exchange network aimed at connecting our clients with Viva. We worked with the Mexican Inter uh, Stock Exchange Intermediaries Association, AMIB in Spanish, in the creation testing and selection of the contractor in charge of the building of this network. So the result was that the network would in consist of an MPLS network in by the supplier, at and It is wholly managed by the supplier from the routers to the links, and its main characteristics are supporting multicast traffic, very important to propagate market data, high availability, every location, every firm has two uplinks and hardware redundancy, and 
links will follow separate routes while being connected to the AT&T network through different contact points. Links or op links are high performance links, uh, 20 megabyte links per second, uh, five times faster than the op the, the links used by the by the firms uh, the stock exchange currently. Latency of these links is under 10 milliseconds. Service is totally managed by AT&T, and there are now service level agreements signed with the supplier already both for the availability of the links and the network equipment and the response times and fault solving <coughs> and there will be a panel a control panel that can be accessed by every can client and every viva in order to monitor the performance of the uplinks and the network so the construction of all of this infrastructure was a whole challenge but at the same time we have to consider the economic and operating efficiency. So specifically, the challenge was to be able to manage and support all of the infrastructure involved in this platform efficiently, that is, with a reduced number of uh, people involved on the infrastructure side, while providing 24-7 support, fulfilling the existing SLAs, and supporting multiple technologies. So the, solu the solution we chose was to s outsource t IT services to third parties. The advantages of this outsourcing is cost reduction because um, uh, specialized personnel are not hired by us, but by the supplier, by the vendor. Our in-house personnel is focused on the task that add value to the core of business. Uh, monitoring, which is hard to uh, uh, to, dif to, to maintain 24-7, is delegated to the vendor. Uh, fulfilling SLAs is easier, and service control is also a benefit. To understand the challenge we faced as an infrastructure area, Viva's infrastructure, us have to support multiple technologies by multiple manufacturers. We have to support four locations, monitor all of that infrastructure 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We have a great variety of services with our clients in the different environments we support. We need to comply with SLAs, as I said. We have to fulfill support, uh, spare parts, operation problems, solving problems with the manufacturer, and at the same time to maintain our equipment up to date always keeping in mind cost reduction, of course. And the challenge is that the infrastructure uh, area has only six members. So the solution was to outsource the services to Sonda with their solution called managed device services. The way we solved it was Viva kept all of the design, all of the requirements of the infrastructure. We, we we are providing first-tier support, and all involved in assignment and supervision of the activities delegated to Sonda, of course, was uh, is pertaining to Viva. Now, Sonda's services after this outsourcing contract uh, are supplying equipment in the OPEX format, the renewal of the equipment at the end of the contract. They offer second-tier support and scaling of problems to manufacturers. They fulfill SLAs, they carry out everything involved with the NOC services for monitoring and provide us monthly reports of all activities. So the reports up to this point have been very, very positive from the financial side. They are very, very happy. There have really been reductions in, in costs of ownership of the infrastructure. It's 100% deductible because it is OPEX. It's an OPEX investment. No, no large expenditures were required for all of this infrastructure, and, and it facilitated all of the management of the cash flow to the finance area. Now, the pr perspective of IT, we did have advantages. We, uh, we have had savings, particularly reducing training expenses in specialized personnel. And what I said, delegating tasks, support tasks, particularly the first, uh, second and third year support, NOC, the NOC, 
And of course, we could conclude that Viva considers Sonda as an extension of its infrastructure area. Yet, not everything has been sweet and easy. Before we made this decision, we were very well aware of the challenges involved in outsourcing and the disadvantages and, and, and risks we were undertaking. And we mitigated that as follows. Fulfilling response times to incidents from in 30 minutes or th under 30 minutes, we succeeded in doing that by having one of Sunda's engineers on site. The great fear in outsourcing is losing control of the delegated infrastructure, and that is why we decided to keep the, the responsibility for tier one support. All incidents are first uh, serviced by us, and we have very good level technical personnel. Another fear is the dependence that might result when you sign uh, an outsourcing contract, you might become dependent on the supplier. And of course, it is important to hire serious companies that are truly able to provide these services. And finally, uh, externalizing such important information or uh, such important activities as the support of your infrastructure is critical. And not everybody might want to take that on. But we minimize that problem by keeping first year support to ourselves. And the coordination has been very good. And there, as I said, is always an on-site engineer, which is rotated so that there is no dependency on a single member. And now I give the floor to Carlos back again for the conclusions to our talk. So some of the takeaway messages we want to highlight here and what we want to do with Viva is that there is a, a, a great opportunity for the capital's market. We as a company recognize it, and that is what we're attacking. The, atta the idea here is that that will um, translate in the finances of our company and including new companies into the stock exchange market the stock market. These are some of the most important challenges that we have faced. But it's uh, an implementation project building from scratch. I mean, we had a floor, no offices, no data centers in the beginning. And some things that we have learned at, along the way are what is what we have been sharing with you today. Particularly, we want to emphasize that it's not just solving how we transmit multicast at the data center. There is also the, the whole problem. It's become a great problem, a great challenge for the technology, everything involved in acquisition and support. Finance departments come to us and get us involved and say, how are you going to operate this? How are, are we going to pay for all of these? How are, when are we going to get the, 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 the necessary staff? What kind of staffing needs are we facing? And that is how we came up to, to this, came up with this managed services solution. Okay, so we took 45 minutes for our presentation, so we have time for questions and answers. And if anybody has any questions, both for Jorge and myself, we'll be happy to answer them. Unfortunately, we cannot translate questions that are not um, spoken into a microphone. We cannot hear them in the interpretation booth. Good afternoon. As a single carrier, is there no risk, even though these are different paths? Did you think of a second carrier? It is a very good question. Yes, we did think about that. But building a network involving two carriers we talked about it with the MIP, and it was more complex than working with a single one. What we accepted as guarantee of our availability was that car carriers who guaranteed 
top-level services such as AT&T guaranteeing 100% availability in their signed contract. We do know that a, that a double supplier design would have been better, but we believe that a single supplier in the end is easier to manage and easier to implement on the technology side. Finally, I, I didn't see how you manage di storage disks in your diagram, so how are you working on that? We have a SAN network, SAN, high availability network, where we're storing all databases. There is a replication between data centers. And we are not writing through these engines. They are not written into the, the hard drive. They, they are kept in the, in the cache memory. And at the end of the day, they download the all of the information. Uh, and, uh, something else in relation to the financial network, we have to keep in mind that, well, we consider that the design, the design of the other firm, the whole system has to be seen as including the Mexican stock market and Viva separately. Viva has its own financial network managed by AT&T, but there is an existing financial network and has existed for many years very successfully that is managed by Telmex. So, of course, we agree with what you're talking about. The, the design would have been ideal, as you described, but in terms of the system, if there were a system failure with any of the two suppliers, the capital market or the stock market in general would not fail because the other side would still exist. Any of the other uh, markets would take it up. So the market would not come to a halt. It only halts when there is a financial element or uh, uh, a financial justification or, or regulatory justification. But when there are technological faults in on any of the two participants, activity is not suspended. And also, uh, coming back to what Jorge said, in at the beginning of the day, everything necessary for the operation is loaded, and the database kept in the cache memory is kept there as a mirror in multiple machines. So if any of the machines stop working, we would still have three more copies of everything. And as Jorge said, at the end of the day, that is written onto a hard drive. Any other question? Data centers are active active standby or active active or what was the requirement for your operations you said that a data center back up, backs up the other but is it active active or is it just as backup no it's just backup the negotiation engines are only run on one of the data centers and all critical information is passed on or replicated online we might say towards the secondary data center acting as the dr and uh, only in case of emergencies do we activate the engines on the secondary data center side. I think it's called RPO, no? What, what, what times are you uh, considering? A second, a minute, an hour? You mean to establish operations from the secondary data center? Do you know that, Carlos? There are two pieces of information there that are very interesting. We think that including human work in the involved in the process of recovering and the other data center for 30 minutes should be enough time to reconnect clients. Reconnections are theoretically automated, but in the ca in the stock market, first you talk to with your counterpart before you uh, reestablish a connection. And yet, the National Banking Commission imposes an RTO of an hour tops to move to the DR. And as I said, stock f exchange firms are able to connect to both market, stock exchange 
And this is something that happens in other markets, in other air countries as well. If for, a reason, if for any reason the order from data flow is not working for any reason, it is almost in, in instantaneously switched to the other. So it's, of course, a, a great incentive for us to maintain an, a system that will not crash, but also one that will have the proper performance because um, these are technologies that are very well known. <clears throat> if I see that the response latency is in one side is, uh, exceeds my expectations, I will just route to the other, no? To that one. So we hope that we never crash. But if markets crash, and if that were to happen, the possibility, of course, is that even though the DR is not longer negotiation, the transfer is nearly instantaneous. Did you think of a double uplink uh, on, on your side or your sides? Is that an active active or active backup, active standby? Yeah, on the client side, uh, different to the current stock exchange in Mexico, where one link leads to the primary center and the other goes to the secondary center. Integrating an MPLS technology, each center has two uplinks, but each can reach both of Viva's sites independently. That is a great advantage. You might have one of your links crashed in, in each site and still be able to reach both sites, which doesn't happen with the current network. Yeah. You have to distinguish between unicast and multicast traffic. Unicast traffic will always be preferential based on routing metrics. But talking about multicast traffic, there we transmit one through the blue link, and the, the other is called the green link. We 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 call it uh, we call the primary one through the blue and the backup through the to the green. And as I said, a possibility is that you might always be listening to both feeds or both or both multicast groups. And if you can recover from failures automatically, then that's what we call that line arbitrage. I have uh, a sequence here and I lose it or the second system reaches me faster through the second link. I grab that and continue receiving the market data. Another important detail might be that if between the between the two centers there are several uplinks depending on the types of traffic and those links are also mirrored in each other yeah the to, go, leading to the primary data center we have two central uplinks and if they should crash we can route traffic generated by the primary data center to the secondary data center and from there reach the brokerage houses because we have interconnected systems. At the data centers interconnections have B separate VLANs. We're not connecting the VLANs, it's just routing. Very well, any other question? Oh, we're on this side of the room now. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention, for your attendance, for your time. If we meet outside and you have any questions, we'll be very, very happy to share with you uh, our experiences. Thank you very much.